<laughs> what in the world? Come on. Come on, you had a, you had a good headshot there. <laughs> <laughs> there it's go. on? It's on, yeah. Oh, come on. Yeah. This is too much. You're too much. People like Can I put it a little closer? Yeah, sure. For the sound? Yeah. Okay, we're good. Here we go. Here we go. Father, we just, we're in awe of you. We just come with grateful hearts, knowing that we are accepted in the beloved, that we're forgiven of every sin, past, present, and future, that we're loved with an unconditional love, agape love, and that this love is now manifesting in us. We believe that, to share with others, to love others the way that you love us. Yeah. This is the commandment that you have, is that we love others the way you love us. So Father, those who are forgiven much love much. So Father, we acknowledge how much we're forgiven. We receive that and we say, great, thank you, thank you. So Father, right now we just wanna hear your voice. I pray that I just be a vessel that you use right now, Lord. Touch us in that special way, Father God, that only you can. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. 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 Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, here we go. For one, I was listening to Andrew Womack's uh, teaching on God's true nature this morning. And I love the fact that he said that, um, like, for instance, say somebody came to me and they were telling me some things about like in the class, I talk a lot about my, my past, my, things, my experiences and mm -hmm. things like that, and people can get to know me, even in the, in the videos, they can get to know me pretty good just because I, I speak a lot about my life and, and things. But I don't know anything about them, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it, it's kind of like if one of them were to come to me and they're telling something about Dylan and saying, hey, you know, that, that Dylan, he's a he's a pervert or something crazy about Dylan. Yeah. I would like, yeah. I would like, uh, no, yeah, no, right. not Dylan. You okay. I, yeah. You, you, don't. you don't know him, right? You don't know him. Mm -hmm. I know him. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. See, and, and that is, and I'll tell mm -hmm. you, see, he is so not that it's not mm -hmm. funny. I mean, so, but here's the thing. That's how it is with God. If somebody tells you something about God, if you really already know him, Mm -hmm. then you know that is so not God. Right, right. Like when people tell me that you're out of fellowship, you got to repent to get right with God, you got to earn your way back into his good graces, you lose your righteousness every time you sin, you got to do this, this, or this to get re-righteous. Right, that is so not God. You know, so, and w what's important is because before I started listening to Andrew Womack and he was teaching some things about God that were pretty amazing. I mean, he's talking about God's agape love, unconditional love. He's explaining the difference between mercy and grace and what grace really is. And he started telling me these things. What he was saying matched up with what I was experiencing coming out of jail as a convict and seeing how God has gone, you know, way out of the way to help me and save me and to get me, turn me away from the drug life I was living, how much God has done for me. And, and how God can constantly pursued me, even though I mm -hmm. threw him on the bus, throw, even though I threw him under the bus so many times, he just kept coming. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I experienced. And when I started hearing this minister preach this, I'm like, that ties in with my experience. Mm -hmm. And what other people, what I've been hearing for so long is you gotta rededicate and recommit, and that you gotta, you're, you gotta, you're out of fellowship and all this weird stuff that I'm hearing. That's not the God I've experienced. Right. And when I, and I really didn't understand, you know, yeah, how to make this connection between what I'm experiencing and what I'm hearing right. until I started to hear some good ministers preach the right stuff. Right. And they're, what they're telling me is what I've experienced. Now I latch on to these guys, which are preaching God's agape love, unconditional love, and, and preaching mercy and grace and what it really is. Right. And now I'm so, oh man, my gosh. And, and, and here's the key. You got to cut that off and say that is not God, so I'm not gonna to toy with that, and you gotta stick with what the grace message really is, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm thinking of titling this the true nature of God, or God's, or, or God's true nature, is because I wanna talk about this. Let's go to Hebrews 1.3. Are we gonna put the card up again? We yeah, we could do that. You like to... Here's my little card. Okay, this is, what I, this is what I put together this morning for this Bible study, okay? You see that? You can stop the recording, and you can, you can look at that. For, oh, I think I'm covering it. Hold on. Easy. Okay, there you, there you go. Now you can see the whole thing. Okay, you ready? Now nothing's covered. Okay, can you see that? The writing's really small at the bottom because I had to fit it all in there. 
Okay. okay. Okay, so it's what But the Jesus, Jesus is telling us what the Father is really like. Right. I, I want to hear from, wouldn't it be nice to hear from Jesus himself what God is really like? Amen. Okay, so Amen. He, Hebrews 1.4. Now, not to mention that Jesus is the express. This is going to tell that Jesus himself is the express image of God. Okay. Mm-hmm. You ready? One, four. Okay. Uh, what did I say? One, three? Okay, let's, one, let's three. say verse, we'll, st- we'll start at uh, verse one. Okay. God, who in various times in different ways spoke in the time past to the fathers by the prophets, okay, has in these last days spoken to us by his son. All right? These last days he speaks through Jesus. They didn't have Jesus to speak through. They, right. they had the prophets, though, right? Whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he has made the world. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. Meaning what God is really like, that means the express mm-hmm. image of his person, means what you, God is really like, you're going to find in Christ. Mm-hmm. Okay, right? So, and uh, look at John 14, 6 through 10. John 14, 6 through 10. John 14, 6 through 10. Okay, go. Jesus said to him, to Thomas, he says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Okay? No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, he's saying I'm the way to the Father, I am the truth about the Father, and I am the life of the Father. You want to know, you want to see the life of God? Look at me. You want to see mm-hmm. the truth about God? Listen to me. You want to see the way to God? Nobody comes to the Father except by me. Okay, so I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. Okay, right? Mm-hmm. Without, the, without the way, there's no going. Without Jesus being the way, there's no going. Without Jesus tr- being the truth, there's mm-hmm. no knowing, right? And without Jesus being the life, there's no growing. Oh, that's good. Isn't that good? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. That's pretty good. Okay, if you had known me, you would have known the Father, verse 7. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father. And it will be sufficient for us. We'll be happy with that. And Jesus said, have I been with you so long, yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you see that. So he's revealing the Father there. John 1, 18. Then I'm going to take you into what he says about the Father. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. I'm just showing you where Jesus is definitely revealing the Father. He said in one place, he said, uh, no one knows what the, uh, he says, I only do what the Father tells me to do, and I only say what the Father tells me to say. No, I only do what I see the Father doing, and I only say what the Father tells me to say. Mm-hmm. Okay? So he says here, John, John 1, 18, you ready? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No one has seen God at any time. Only the begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, who has declared him. So he's revealing the Father right there. Again, again, right? You not only is the express image of God, but there he says, nobody knows the Father except me, and I'm declaring him. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay, you get that? Mm-hmm. We'll go with one more. Matthew, ele- Matthew, uh, Matthew 11, 27. Hang with me now. Mm-hmm. All things have been delivered to me by my Father. And no one knows the Son but the Father, nor does anyone know the Father but the Son. That's heavy. And he to whom the Father wills to reveal him. Again, he's revealing the, fa- the Father to him. And then he goes on about this, come to me, all of you who labor and rest. Mm-hmm. I'll give you rest. Who, who, yeah. Heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Okay? So we see Jesus revealing the Father. So let's look at what Jesus said about the Father. Okay? okay? Right? Now... This is why you got to be able to see what Jesus was doing when he says, you know, if you judge, you'll be judged. If you condemn, you'll be condemned. If you even call somebody fool, you're in danger of hellfire. What was he doing there? Was he revealing the Father there? He's revealing the law. He's revealing the law. That's what the law called for. You had to do these things to earn right standing with God, to earn favor with God. Right. Under grace, we, it is unmerited it. favor. It. Mm-hmm. Unmerited, unearned favor. Mm-hmm. Right. right? Right? When Jesus was saying you got to earn it, you got to work for it, you got to do this, this, and this to get it, that was works of the law, deeds of the law, things you had to do to get. But Jesus hadn't gone on the cross yet. When he went to the cross, he changed everything. Right? right. He, said, what, he said every sin will be forgiven. What's he talking about? The cross. Mm-hmm. Right? That's where every sin will be forgiven. Mm-hmm. You're calling somebody a fool, anything. Yeah, right? right? Mm-hmm. Lusting, anger, 
He said every sin will be forgiven except blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. So that means every one of those, we say, he said, if you, he, he, by every idle word you speak, you will be condemned. But I guess any idle word that I speak, I won't be condemned because there's no condemnation for me in Christ. Right, right. Right? Yeah. Jesus said elsewhere, those who believe will not be condemned. So I guess every idle word that I speak will not be condemned. Right? But I'm not taking away from saying, okay, now we can just speak. As people think when I talk like this, I'm saying that we could just speak idle words. We could just be lust. And we could be angry. We don't. No, there's yeah. a love factor. Jesus is bringing in a love yeah. factor, revealing the love of the Father so that we know what love is. The Bible says if you don't, lo if you don't love your neighbor, you're you don't love God. He said if you don't, um, how does he say it? If you don't even know God, how does he say it? You don't even know God if you don't. He said if you don't love your brother, then you. You don't, you don't know, know God. God. Yeah. Right? You don't love your brother. Mm -hmm. John, the same John who writes a lot of this stuff in his gospel, is saying that if you don't love others, you don't even know God. Mm -hmm. So there's a love factor. I'm not taking away from that. Okay? But I'm right. taking, but I'm trying to emphasize what Jesus was doing with the law to bury you in the fact that you don't have this love that you need. This love that he's calling for, to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Mm -hmm. Why does Paul say nobody seeks after God? Because nobody could do that. This love right. he's demanding, nobody could do. Mm -hmm. Like I said last week, that it was a, 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 in the book of Acts, he says that, that law was a heavy yoke that no one was meant to carry. They couldn't carry it. Mm -hmm. They weren't meant to. Right. It was just meant to show you defeat, so you'll appreciate the blood of animals. It would mm -hmm. cover your sins. It would make you appreciate that. You know, what I found was very heavy, very interesting. You know, in all four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, yeah. Jesus never talks about the sacrifices outside of himself. Mm -hmm. uh, of a, uh, he's, he he right. came to be the ultimate sacrifice. He yeah. came to take us out from under the law. So why would he talk, talk about, he talked about the law and things you have to do to earn favor with God, to get right with God. He said, you've got to be more righteous than the Pharisees or you're not going to get in the kingdom. So he's saying you've got to be super righteous to get in the kingdom. Okay, so he talked a lot about that kind of stuff. Okay, things you have to do to earn, right? You hear a lot of that coming out of his mouth. But he never talked about the animal sacrifices, which was atoned for right. this which would atone for the sin. He never talked about right. that. You see, it right. you see him walk, you see him during the Passover, you see him during the, fi the festivals, you see what he's doing during that time, right? It talks about that, but doesn't talk, he himself does not ever talk about the blood of animals atoning for your sin. Mm -hmm. He right. just buries you with the law and lets you see your sin, Amen. right? Right, right. Because that's what he's doing. He's trying to bury you in your self-righteousness and let you see you're not righteous. You're, what you're doing is not going to cut it. You need help. You need a savior. And he, he never pointed you the way out for them at that time because mm -hmm. Jesus hadn't gone to the cross yet. Right. He hadn't shed his blood yet. He did that in, in Revelation too when they, in the Laodicea, Church of Laodicea, he says, you say that, you're, that you have everything you, have, you need. You have everything you need. You have, there's nothing, you know, I don't need... You know, and Jesus says, don't you realize that you're poor, miserable, blind, and naked? Because they weren't trusting in a Savior. Yeah, yeah there's a lot. He, he explains that on several occasions, on many occasions. He, he, like he said, he said that only those who do the will of the Father are going to get in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Right? And these people came, and they say, they stopped him at the door. And he said, they said, hey, well, didn't we prophesy your name? Didn't we do all these... Didn't we uh, cast out demons in your name? Didn't we work miracles in your name? Didn't we, th weren't, we throwing, weren't we throwing your name around and doing a whole lot of bunch of stuff? And he says, away from me, you evildoers. I never knew you. Right? Mm -hmm. So they, they were righteous. trusting in their righteous actions, their good mm -hmm. deeds, their behavior, whatever it was they were trusting in. It wasn't Jesus. Wasn't and that's Jesus. why he said, I never knew. He didn't say, you know, get out. I, you were a Christian, but now you're not. He said, I never knew you mm -hmm. because they never mm -hmm. trusted in him. They always yeah. trusted in themselves yeah. and their works. Yeah. Wow. And that's what Jesus was exposing, their works relationship with God. That's why in the New Testament it said it is not by works, it is by grace. In the New Covenant it says it's for those who work not, but that's just powerful. believe. Okay, right? Yeah, that's really good. Are, are you feeling me? Yeah, that's it's a different message after the cross. But Jesus couldn't preach cross messages, not the way he, Paul does. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? Because yeah, he was right. under law. Because he was under law. He yeah. had to fulfill the law. He said, I came to fulfill the law. He was under law. The Bible says he was born under law. Yeah. It says that in Galatians. He, he was born, he was, when, until Jesus came, born of a woman, born under law. So they, they, you redeem those under the law the, that we might receive the adoption as sons. Uh, go ahead. The, the, well, read the whole thing. I mean, no, say it. It says, uh, Jesus was born under law to redeem those under the law that we might receive the, the adoption as sons. 
And God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. But soul. Jesus was born under law. That means the whole time he's walking on this earth, he had to deal with people living under the law because they were, weren't saved by to grace. Redeem us. Mm -hmm. yeah. they, he had to redeem them through his blood. How, did, how were they redeemed? Through the blood. Yeah, That's okay. why it says now in Hebrews, it says we can come into holiest, uh, we come into to the holiest place boldly through the blood. They did not have that. Just did the they did not of, have of, of, of obeying the law. They did not have the Holy Spirit. They didn't have the spirit yeah. of adoption. Yeah. They were not adopted into the family of God. They were not born again. Right, right, right. They still had the sin nature. They still had the Adamic nature. They were still a mess. Mm -hmm. And they needed to see it. Mm -hmm. What does he say? That the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? What Jesus was doing was revealing the law so they could know it. Mm -hmm. you, their, that their hearts were deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who could know it? Well, let me give you law message so that you can know it. Mm -hmm. and, and turn to me as right. the only way. He said, I'm, yeah. I'm the way, the truth, and life. Doesn't nobody comes, to, nobody comes to the Father except by me. Yeah. So, you would be, so you would receive my invitation to come to me so mm -hmm. I can give you rest. And the only way to the Father is through me. So it was, it was a message bringing you to himself. Amen. Okay? Mm -hmm. and, and, but for him to do that, I mean, what's the best way for you to see? For me, when I was a drug addict, what was the best way for me to go to a program? What was the best way for, for me to decide it's time for a program? I can't save myself. I can't help myself. I yeah. am a mess. Yeah. Somebody I've tried. Show me how. I've tried. Yeah. I can't do it. Amen. So now I'm looking for a way out. Okay, I guess a drug program is the only way I can get help. I guess I better go. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus is doing with the law. He's helping you see there's no way for you to save yourself. Yeah. That's right? like step one of the, uh, kept, those anonymous, the end of yourself. alcoholic anonymous programs or over years anonymous. Yeah, the, what is it? It's step the, one where it says you admit you're powerless. And cow! Able, yeah, you're unable to save yourself. That's what Jesus is looking for when he ministers law to these people, telling you you're condemned, you're judged, you're, you're danger of hellfire, you're, you're all these things. He's, he's just telling you to help them see that, dude, how did you say it? It's like step one, where you say you, are, you, are, you admit you're powerless. Yeah, you're going to admit you're powerless. You can't save yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. you know, and, and you need a savior. Amen. And then you take hold of one. Yeah. You come to him for what you need. You come to him and you receive that rest that he's promising. Come mm. to the end of yourself. Uh, isn't that oh, yeah. great? Yeah. And that's humility. Mm -hmm. People think, you know, you got to be humble, humble, humble. you got to be humble. He opposes the power, but he gives grace to the humble. Well, you know when he said that in the scriptures where it actually says that he gives, he, he opposes the power, he gives grace to the humble? Mm. It was a difference between a proud Pharisee that was trusting in himself, right? Oh, yeah. And, 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 and a, a, a person who knew, just knew he was a sinner, mm -hmm. and, and he said, have mercy on me, a sinner. Yeah. He, he was just hoping for mercy. He realized his nakedness, his, his, his wretchedness. Mm -hmm. Okay, his heart is deceitful above all things and desperately mm -hmm. wicked. He understood, he, he, he admits that. And he says, oh, save me. And that's where he says, th that's where he is, that verse comes in at the end of that little scenario with the tax collector and, 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 the, and the, the, with the, the Pharisee and the tax collector, right? The rich man says, oh, thank yeah. God I'm not like this guy over here, this yeah. sinner over here. Oh, that, mm -hmm. oh, I'm so holy, I pray and I tithe and I'm so holy, I do so many good things. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and the other tax collector says, have mercy on me, a sinner. I don't, I'm not even beat on his press, stayed in the shadows, didn't want to come out in public. This mm -hmm. is pray, the Pharisees praying in public where, where everybody can see, I'm so holy, you know, showing off his goodness. You know, and the, Pharisee, the, the tax collector says, oh, have mercy on me, a sinner, I'm not even worthy, you know, come in your, come in your, you know, could be near you, like right. like Peter in the boat. Mm -hmm. Have you know, mm -hmm. uh, away from me, a sinner, <laughs> right? Right. Me, I'm a sinful man, oh Lord. Yeah, I'm a sinful man. Have mercy. I'm uh, I'm a, I, I'm not even worthy to be in your presence. It's like right. you know. Right. But Jesus says to him, He says, "I'm going to make you a fisher of men." Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's what God does for people who can come with that humility of just saying, uh, <laughs> "You know, I'm not worthy of anything. I can't earn anything. Wages right. of sin is death." Mm -hmm. So I need the gift of God that is eternal life in Christ, right? Right. So um, let's look at what Jesus says about the Father, John 3, 16. This is what Jesus says about the Father. You ready? Mm -hmm. For God's so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. So that, that's Jesus revealing the Father. That God so loved all of you. Amen. Right? Jesus. The whole world. Anybody in it that would just believe. 
You know, God's love is in sending the son. And he says, dude, if you, and we think that he's going to love us less once you're saved. He says, God so loved the whole world that he sent his son to do this. Yeah. And now you're saved. You think he's going to love you less? Right. The Bible, yeah, like, the Bible doesn't say that in Romans 8. It says, uh, he, Roman, he, he, Romans 8, it says he, 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 uh, that um, it won't he freely give us all things. You know, yeah, if he died for you, won't he, he certainly freely, freely give, give you all you things? things. Yeah, and Romans 5 says if he died for his enemies, won't he certainly much more, much more, you know, much more, yeah. save you from all his wrath, yes, right? So right? Both, both of those scriptures. Right? So, so, the, so it's saying God. that he will do more, not less, for yeah. you as a believer. I mean, come on. He sent his son to die for right. the whole world. God right. so loved the whole world that he sent his son to die for you. And now you receive that. You're saved. You're adopted into the family. You're his kid. But now, oh, if you sin, no fellowship. Yeah, right. No fellowship for you. You're out of fellowship. Yeah, right, right. right. See, that don't make any sense right. when it says okay. it's much more. Won't he certainly freely give you all things if he died for you? See, it's much more. It's not much less. I like what you said about the no fellowship uh, in the past. You said that, that God doesn't want, doesn't like division. Why would he model division if he, he, he doesn't like, he says he, he, he came against the church about division in the church. And God, why would God divide cause division with us you know our relationship with him that's a good point how, how do you think uh, how do you think God feels about you and in, in your your husband you got into some little bit of disagreement and you're not talking hmm. loss of fellowship yeah how would he feel about that Is this, would good. you think God encourages that no absolutely you think he not. encourages no fellowship between you loved ones no. your family well the Bible says we're married with Christ we're, he's yes. the, he, we're the bride he's the groom right it's a marriage Right. You think he wants a loss of fellowship mm -hmm. in this marriage relationship that we have with God through Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. We're coming to the Father through him anyways. The Bible says we can come boldly through the blood. Boldly, not loss of fellowship. Yeah, it right? says he despises uh, discord among the brethren. Yeah. It's one thing that the Lord hates, you know, the, the abomination mm -hmm. to him. Why would he model that? We think God holds us to a higher standard than he would expect from us. You know, he, he it's the same. Yeah. He wants you to treat people the way he's, he says that he's, he wants you to treat people the way, uh, the, the way he's treating you. Jesus yeah. said, love one another as I have loved you. Mm -hmm. So he wants you to be treating your husband the way he's treating you. Mm -hmm. So if you think God is putting you out of fellowship, well, then, hey, God should be okay with you being no fellowship with your husband. Right. No, yeah. that don't make any sense. That doesn't make any yeah. sense. Right, right. <sighs> Are you feeling me? See, when I put it on this uh, 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 train of thought, because people think, people say that, oh, well, you know, uh, if you're my child, I, I'm more strict with you as my child. You know, I, I hold you to a high, higher standard than with, if you're my kid than I would with the neighbor's kid. You know, with, God's ways are not our ways. His right. thoughts are not our thoughts. All right? So we don't, we, the Bible says, well, highs of the heavens are from the earth, are his ways and his thoughts from us. Okay, so God's ways are not the way we, 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 we have this problem. This is what we Christians tend to do. We try to shape God into our mold. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be shaped into his mold. Amen. Right. So right? We transform. Oh, our, my gosh. Yeah. And that's where yeah. we're supposed to be loving others the way Father loves yeah. me. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. why I should be treat, you should be treating your husband the way that he's treating you and yeah. not hold that grudge, not be, not, not be loss of fellowship. Right. Don't go there for, not for a minute. And, and people encourage that. They say, well, you're out of fellowship. Yeah, you, you got to confess, when, and you can get back in fellowship once when, you confess. When you love the Lord, Bible don't teach that. And people, people do. You don't want to disappoint. You don't want to disagree. You don't want to, to you know. Yeah, you, you know, it's it's like I was talking to somebody the other day, and um, and uh, I was we were talking about the police. There, this mm -hmm. friend of my roommate came over to get his mail. My roommate's been gone for a couple of months, and he's, mm -hmm. his mail was stocking up. So he had a friend come over to get his mail. But, but the guy's, like, talking about how they challenge the courts and, you know, how the police are corrupt and all this. He just talks like that. He's just one of those kind mm -hmm. of people that just they are against the government stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and I was saying, yeah, you know, I, I know we, all, we tend to hate the cops until we need one. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 yeah, all of a sudden they're your buddy. Oh, yeah, please yeah. help me. Oh, you're my best friend yeah. when you need one. Okay, but otherwise you're throwing stones at them. You hate speech, all this stuff mm -hmm. about they're so corrupt. And I told him, I'm sure there are corrupt cops, but don't label them all corrupt just because there are, you know, fewer dirty. There's some bad ones out there. You don't mm -hmm. want to do that. That's, you know, yeah. that's, that's good. You don't want nobody doing that to you, right. you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's funny when you turn things around and put it into some real, you know, yeah, right. he had nothing to say to that when he's saying all the stuff about their crowd. And then when I said, you know, yeah, until we need one. Right, right. All of a sudden, he, he changed the subject. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and the hardest thing, one of the hardest things, is to be married to a cop. Oh yeah. Because they get they get it from all directions. Yeah. Right, and they have to, they bring it home. Oh yeah. 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 Okay, so God so loved the world, right? John three sixteen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so God so loved the whole world before we were saved, right? He loved right. us so much that he wanted to save us. That's Amen. what it's saying. Amen. Amen. Right? Yeah. And now that we're saved, he says we're adopted into his family. We're now his kids. He takes, he, the Bible says God, so, uh, oh, how does it say? Yeah, like you said, he says if he died for us, won't he certainly freely give us all things? Mm -hmm. He says now we're saved to the uttermost, all those who come to God are through Christ, because he always lives to intercede for you, not no fellowship for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He says we are so saved, saved to the uttermost, Hebrews uh, chapter, seven, chapter 7. It says, we're saved to the uttermost, all those who come to God through Christ, because he always, seeing that he always lives to intercede for us. He wants us to see him interceding for you. So, should I see no fellowship, or should I see Jesus interceding for me? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, let's look at Luke 6.35. Jesus told us what the Father is like. Mm -hmm. Luke 6.35, are you ready? Mm -hmm. Can we just latch on these? If you latch on these like I do, you won't be fooled by these, 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 these naysayers, the ones that are putting a price tag on grace. You won't be fooled by that stuff, this, this religious double talk that people are so comfortable throwing at us. Yeah. You know, you want to, if you just look at the, look, what, yeah, look at how Jesus is identifying the Father, and you will, you'll, you'll see something different. Okay, so you ready? Uh, uh, what did I say? Luke 6.35. Luke 6.35. This is good. Okay, uh, but love your enemies. Mm -hmm. Okay, now if Jesus is telling you to do that, you think God isn't going to do that for you? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. if, if he's telling you to do it, you think that God is going to hold you to a higher standard than God, than God is going to do to you? Okay, well, he loves you. Even The Bible says he died for his enemies. Right? Right, right. So he's telling you to be like him. Love your enemies, do good, and lend, hoping for nothing in return. That's heavy. How hard is that to lend to somebody and expect nothing in return? It's yeah. kind of, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the highest. For he is kind to the unthankful and the evil. Mm -hmm. Some say the wicked. Yeah, the wicked. Mm -hmm. Right? Right, right. That's heavy. Mm -hmm. Therefore, be merciful, just as your heavenly Father is merciful. He's trying to be like God. Oh, yeah. And he's kind to the wicked yeah. and the unthankful. So he's telling you, love your enemies. Be kind to the wicked and the unthankful, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You ever feel like, boy, oh, this guy doesn't appreciate me, you know? Right. Just, uh, you know yeah. that, right? Yeah. Uh, that's, you know, you ever feel like they don't, I don't appreciate it around here, you know? It's like he says, be kind to them that are ungrateful. Yeah. Right. Just want mm -hmm. the goodies. Yeah. That, that's yeah. heavy. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the father with the prodigal son. Yeah. Right. Right. Because you were right. Like, you were once them. Yeah. The prodigal, mm -hmm. yeah, oh, yeah, and we yeah. still are in some ways, mm -hmm. yeah. right? We just don't see it. Like he says, the heart of the deceitful above all things is to be the wicked. God gives us a new heart, but we're still some of that residue still going on in our brain, in our thinking. You yeah. know, yeah. we still, we don't instantly become Mr. Joe Holy Joe all of a sudden right. just because no. we got saved. No. You know, we're in a process of becoming Christ-like. The Bible says we're, 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 we're predestined to be conformed into his image. So there is some conforming going. The Bible says be transformed by the renewal of your mind. So our mind needs to be renewed. Okay, so there's always yes. room, there's always room, room for, for growth. growth. Always. No matter how old you are, no matter how long you've been a Christian, there's a lot of room for growth. A lot of room. That's why the Bible says to grow in the grace and the knowledge Amen. of Jesus Christ, because that's a consistent thing. That's consistent. Yeah, God this God idea God. that we got to confess to stay forgiven and to stay cleansed of all unrighteousness, they make that to be consistent. you got to keep doing that to, get, to keep it. What's consistent is that you're, you're, you're always renewing your mind to the, to, to the new life of Christ in you. You know? Mm -hmm. That's consistent. That's ongoing. Okay, so you love your enemies. He's kind to the wicked, the untangled. Jesus is telling you, this is, this is red letters. This is your, see, it's red letters. Yes. It's Jesus is saying this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was red letters where he said, he told Nicodemus, God so loved the world that he gave me to die for you. Mm -hmm. You know, if you would just believe on me, you won't perish. You know, right? And he's saying here that to love your enemies, do good to them because you'll be like God. You'll be merciful as he is merciful. You'll be loving the unthankful and the evil, the wicked. You'll be loving them. <laughs> Yeah. That's God. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. How about this one? John 5, 22. This is heavy. We talk about this one a lot, but it's good to throw this in here. We need this in here. Because Jesus is telling you what the Father is like. Now, how many people say that, yeah, well, you know, he's loving, he's kind, he's forgiving. 
but he is a judge, right? Oh, what yeah. about the judgment seat of Christ? You know, right? Mm -hmm. Well, let's look at what the Jesus telling what the Father is like right now. Right. What did Jesus chose to do with your judgment? He chose to take it to the cross, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. right? He chose to be judged for you. Like I say, it's a lightning rod, you know, to save the house. You put a lightning rod to absorb all the lightning to save the house. Well, Jesus was lifted up on a cross to absorb all God's judgment to save us, right? Mm -hmm. So here it is, verse 21. Oh, verse 22. For the jo Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son, mm -hmm. that all should honor the Son just as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Right? Yeah, so that's in, in, the, in verse 24, it tells that the Jesus, what Jesus did with our judgment. Yeah, verily, good. Verily, verily, I say unto you, mm -hmm. he that hears my word and mm -hmm. believes on him that sent me has everlasting life. And, and shall sure. not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. That's good, because Jesus is saying, telling you right there yeah. what he does with your judgment. Yeah, that's what he does. You believe on him, believe on him who sent me. Because right. right here he says the Father judges no one. Yeah. Here he says, but believe in that the Father sent me, that you will not come under judgment. Mm -hmm. right? right? So there he says the Father judges no one. He gave all judgment to the Son. And he says, if you believe the Father sent him, mm -hmm. that you will not come under judgment. Right. Whoa! Yeah. Buddy! Yeah. Let's believe that the Father sent Jesus to save us. That's all we that's Come on. We do, yeah. He says you already passed from dead life. You're already in the door. Mm -hmm. oh, that's a new commandment, to believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The perfect Passover. And then we have the prodigal son. I don't want to go through all the prodigal son, but let's go, let's go to Luke 15. I just want you to glance at the prodigal son. Because Jesus is taking a beautiful picture here of what the Father is really like. All right, he tells us God so loved the world he gave me to die for your sins. He's kind to the wicked, the unthankful, but he doesn't judge anybody. He gave all judgment to me, and I chose to take your judgment to the cross, yeah. right? This is what he's saying about the Father. Okay, so Luke 15. Luke 15, which, which, okay. You're familiar with the prodigal son, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Okay, mm -hmm. we don't need to go through the whole thing, but I just want you to see what's going on here. Okay, now... Um, uh, Verse 20? Uh, yeah, that's good. Thank you. We'll start at verse 20, okay? Because his son was feeding pigs. He came to the lowest point of his life, okay? He, the father, he asked for his inheritance. The father gave it to him. He took the money and ran, okay? It's amazing the father would even give him. The kid says, I want my money now. Just give me my inheritance. I want out of here. Just give me my money. I don't care about, I don't want to be with you. I, want, I just want the money that's coming from you, okay? I don't, want, I don't want the good father. I want the goodies, okay? Mm -hmm. And he took the money and ran. He split. Okay, and then he wasted all the money, and now he's at the lowest part of his life. He's even feeding pigs, which was like the worst thing for a Jew, mm -hmm. because figs, pigs are um, unclean, unclean mm -hmm. you know, they're, it's like you can't even eat pig, right? Yeah. So um, he was feeding pigs, lowest point of his life, and here he goes in verse 20. Um, uh, we'll start at 18. I will arise and I'll go to my father and I will say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Okay, so he's rehearsing his speech. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna go tell dad, you know, I messed up, okay. Um, I'm, not, I'm not worthy of even being your son. Just give, I'll, I'll, work, I'll, try, I'll, I'll work hard at trying to pay you back, whatever, okay. Just make mm -hmm. me as one of your hired servants. A works relationship. R yeah, a works relationship, that's, that's good. Is, yeah. That's a works yeah. relationship, he's In still thinking. That. That that's the mentality that we have with how we somehow we're going to make this up to God. We're going to mm -hmm. somehow make it up. Right? Know, That's why he's, this is why that is there. He's very detailed in what he's saying because it's meant for us to apply it to our salvation mm -hmm. and what the Father's yeah. really like under the new covenant. God is really like this. Watch God, this. God doesn't accept that. And he, and he, yeah. He oh, he cut him he off cut when him he tried off. to say that yeah, stuff. Yeah, he says that we're he not cut him have off. a work relationship. He never got into the servant part with the yeah. works. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He, <laughs> went, he never got as far as talking <laughs> about being a servant. Work, yeah, he never got yeah. far enough to talk yeah. about working for it. Right, right, right. He right, cut right. him off. Yeah. As funny. soon as he said, I'm not worthy to be your son, that was odd. That, that's enough. I, I don't, I don't want to hear any works yeah, stuff. Yeah, I don't want to hear the works I don't want to hear servant stuff. You're my son. Yeah. It's adoption. Yeah. It's heavy. Look, yeah. look, look, that part about making me like a higher tournament, he never gets that far. When he tries to say it, mm -hmm. he never gets that far. Right, right. And he arose and he came to the father. And when he was still a great way off, the father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, watch, here's the, here's the speech. Father, I, it's almost word for word, except mm -hmm. for something is missing. The servant part, right? And the son said to him, I have sinned against heaven and at your sight, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son 
And, but the father said to the servants, he didn't say, you're right, you don't deserve mm. a thing, you little unworthy. Yeah. You, yeah. You're, you're, you're lucky I even let you back in the door, you little worm. He didn't yeah. do that. He, he turns to the servant and says, hey, uh, go get the best robe. Put it on this kid. Go get my own robe of righteousness Amen. and robe him with yeah. my righteousness. Amen. That's, what it, that's what that symbolizes. The Bible says all those who are baptized in Christ and put him on. You're putting on the righteousness of Christ. And that's what that symbolizes, the robe Amen. of righteousness. Right? Mm -hmm. Get the breast robe, put him on, put a ring on his hand, sandals on his feet, bring the fatted calf, kill it, let us eat and be merry, for this son of mine was dead, he's alive, he was lost, he is found. And then comes in the older son. Mm -hmm. But what I want you to see is the father was, blew the kid's mind. The kid was hoping for mercy. Right. What did he get? Sunshine. Grace. Yeah, yeah. He was hoping yeah. for mercy. Maybe he'll let me back in the door if I promise to do these things. Right. That's the way most of us come to God, just mm -hmm. hoping for mercy, right? Crying for mercy. Mm -hmm. But God wants to shower his grace on you. He wants to run to you, hug you, kiss you, not even mention your sin. Shower you with gifts. Put his robe of righteousness around you so you can feel clean, right? Amen. Amen. He doesn't want you feeling dirty. That's what the robe of righteousness symbolizes. I don't want you feeling dirty when you approach me. Don't come like that. Mm -hmm. The Bible says we must worship him in, in, in spirit and in truth. In spirit, we're righteous as God is. He imputed that's a, his that, right. That's a picture of what God did with Adam. When Adam and Eve were cl uh, clothed with fig leaves, God put on um, animal skins to cover them um, better so that they would feel safe approaching God rather than doing their own works that's a really good point because that prodigal son was coming home with the mentality of adam yeah that's works. the adamic nature that's somebody who doesn't understand what it means to be saved by grace he's gonna adam didn't have the holy spirit and he felt filthy because he did not have the holy spirit he gave him up when he sinned mm -hmm. yeah. he said the moment you eat from that tree you will die so he gave up the holy spirit when he died i mean, I mean that that's that's a spiritual death right right so in that in that nature, in that, that place, he, he was afraid to come near God. He was afraid of coming, approaching him. He hid from him and covered himself with fig leaves. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like the nature of, of the, the prodigal son coming home. He was afraid. He was nervous. He was hoping that maybe he'll have mercy. You know, mm -hmm. that's the wrong. God doesn't want you coming like that. That's why he says in mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 10 that we can come into the holiest through the blood. Amen. Amen. We can come boldly to the throne of grace. It says in Hebrews chapter 4, we can come boldly that he sympathizes with our weakness. Therefore, we can come boldly to the throne of grace and receive mercy and grace whenever we need it. He's inviting us to a boldness. Jesus said to come to me, all of you who are living. I'll give you rest. He's inviting us just to come boldly under the new covenant. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Mm -hmm. So he showered the kid with gifts. He's telling you what the father was like. The father ran to the kid, hugged him, kissed him. He wasn't angry. Right. Right? right? He didn't mention he his sad. sin. Yeah. You know who did? The brother mentioned his sin. The yeah, brother was right. angry. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the brother didn't want fellowship. We say, oh, the father, no fellowship for you. The father ran to that kid. He yeah. didn't even wait for a confession. He didn't yeah. wait for apologies. He ran to the kid before he said a word. And when he tried to apologize, he cut him off. It's not that. No, 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 none of that. See, that's what you get from them. What Jesus is telling you what the God is really like. Mm -hmm. Let's hear what he says when he's taught, when he's showing you what the... See, when he's saying it, if you, believe, if, you, if you judge, you'll be judged. If you condemn, you'll be condemned. If you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. He's not telling you what the Father is like. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. right. He's talking right. about the law. Yeah, he's talking about what the law calls for. Yeah. You know? Right. You would be like God if you could keep all the law. But only Jesus could do that. Right? Right, right, right. 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 So, and Jesus revealed him the love behind the law. Mm. You know, the love that is behind the law, the way he says to love God. The, when he put all the laws into two commandments, it was a love factor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what uh, Paul, a, Saul missed that because he, was, he said he could, he could fulfill the whole law, but he was persecuting Christians. He missed the love factor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the main part of the law, even though he said right. he was blameless under the law, Paul, Saul said before he became Paul. Mm -hmm. He said he was blameless. He says, according to the commandments of the law, I was blameless. I kept the whole law, but he missed the love factor. 
Mm -hmm. The love factor, when he put all the commandments, all the commandments into the, uh, the, the two commandments, he said, love God with all your heart. When the guy said, what's the greatest yeah. commandment of the law? He said, love God with yeah. all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, yeah. all your strength. And he said, love your neighbor the way you love yourself. And this, he says, all the law hinges on these two. Amen. Right? right. Amen. So it was a love factor. That was, yeah. Right? Yeah. And it even yeah. says, and it even says, I think in Corinthians, it, first Corinthians, I think it says that, um, it says, uh, love is a fulfillment of the law. Yeah. Amen. That, that's what right? that's really what's about it. So, when you love somebody, you don't want to hurt them. And that's what Jesus was love manifested. Mm -hmm. He was revealing the love of the Father in going to the cross and mm -hmm. dying for your sins and saying, Father, when he said, Father, forgive them, they know what to do. That was God's will that he do that, mm -hmm. that he go to the cross and pray that prayer, mm -hmm. asking for forgiveness. And it was God who, was, who sent him to do it. You think he didn't do it? Mm -hmm. Think he's not forgiving us? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, think he's not answering that prayer? Mm -hmm. Sure. But the question is, do we want in? Do we want in? Those who have the Son have life. Those who don't have the Son don't have life. The question is, do you have the Son? Are you receiving what he's offering? Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, let's look at this. With, uh, the, uh, Luke 23, 24. We just, we just, I just mentioned that. He says the Father on the cross, he says, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. We could look at that. Luke 23, 24. I want to get through these other ones, Dylan, at the bottom, but we're not going to, we're going to have to. We're not have to get through this. I know, next huh? Week we, have to do it. we can go through those next week. Right, so Luke 23, what was it, uh, Luke? 24. 23, 24. Okay, good. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Is it? No. Um, Luke 23, 24. Different. Let's see. Uh, Luke 23. Let's see. Okay, it is 20, 34. 34. Okay. okay. Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. 34. Okay, here it is. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. You know what he's basically saying? He's saying, Father, they're ignorant. Yeah. They don't have a clue. Like he says, the yes. heart is deceitful above yes. all things. Who can know it? Yeah. Their hearts are hearts. All yeah. of our hearts. All of them. He said he was sent to the lost sheep of Israel. They're all lost. Yeah. Okay? And he says elsewhere in the scripture that our hearts are deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Right. They don't know what they're doing. We don't know what we're doing without Christ in us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Without the life of Christ in us, we don't yeah. have a clue. He says no one even seeks after God. Mm -hmm. right? right? But in Christ, we do. In okay? Christ. Because Christ is helping us with that. Because we're sharing a yoke with him. He said, take my yoke upon me. Learn from me. So now we have a teacher. Jesus moves in. Okay, the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit is our teacher. The Bible says that he's the, he, will, he will guide you into all truth. The Holy Spirit, when he comes, yeah. he will guide you into all truth. So we have a teacher now. Okay, and that's all that really matters. Mm -hmm. That's what God is looking at. Do you have the teacher in you? Right? Mm -hmm. Are you being led by the Holy Spirit? That's mm -hmm. what he's looking at. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Right? Uh -huh. Yep. And some, some of us might, you know, kind of go a little bit squirrely on the whole thing. But, you know, if we just, if we're hearing the right messages and reading the right stuff and taking it in the way we should, you'll grow a lot faster. Mm. There'll be a lot more maturity going mm. on if you're receiving the right messages, if you're mm. leading with the right stuff. Like I'm telling you, Jesus is telling us what the Father is like. Right. And he said, Father, forgive them. You know, he said in the garden, let's go to this one, Mark 13, 36. Thirteen thirty-six. Yeah. Let's see if I got this one right. Okay. Is that it? No. It's not. It is it. Thirty-six. What, what's Why am I getting all these wrong? What's wrong with me? Uh, it's the one where he says, "Not my will, your, or your will be done." Where he's in the garden. No, that's twenty, probably twenty-six. No, huh? no, that's not it. Maybe it's Matthew. No, no, that wouldn't no, be Matthew. It's toward no. the end. It's toward the end. It's, uh, maybe it's 20. There, no, it would be... Um, is it Mark? It's probably, if it's in Mark, then it would Let be 14, see. maybe. Abba, Father, nothing is impossible for you. Oh, that's 36. 1436. 436, yeah. 1436. 1436. Boy, what's wrong with me? Boy, I'm way off on this. Okay, Mark okay. fourteen thirty six. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Um, 
We'll start at 35. And he went a little farther, fell on the ground, and he prayed. This is Jesus. If it were possible, the hour might pass from him. So he's praying that if it's possible, this hour of suffering mm -hmm. might pass. Yeah. And you know, I can, let's take a pass on this. That's what he's saying. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Please take this cup of suffering from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, your will be done. Mm -hmm. Now, it obviously was the will of the Father because he went through with it. Yeah. Right? Okay. So the will of the Father is that Jesus suffer in your place, become sin for you. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and you not be punished for your sin. It would be double jeopardy if, you were, if God made you pay for sins that Jesus paid for. Oh yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. In our court system, right. that's called, called double, double jeopardy. If it like, um, um, if somebody gets arrested, and say for murder, and say sometimes they don't have a body, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And but they have evidence and all kinds of stuff to to, and and they try and take you, try and find you guilty on that evidence alone mm -hmm. without even a body. They will try and do that at times, and 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 because they didn't have enough evidence. And you're found innocent because the jury wouldn't convict you on what evidence they had. They didn't prove beyond a mm -hmm. shadow of a doubt that you're, you're, right. you did it. It's hard right. to do that yeah. without a body. Right. Yeah. You know, they don't even know they're dead, mm. right? right? But, but right. they do yeah. try. Yeah. And, and so, so, so you get off on that, okay? Now, suppose they find the body in your backyard with your fingerprints all over it, okay? They can't try you again. Right. Wow. Yeah, that's true. Because they gave it their best shot. Oh, wow. That's why they wait. That's oh. it's called double jeopardy. They can't try, try they can't try you for the same crime twice. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Our, our, our that's why they hold off. That's why they hold off even bringing you on trial because they want to wait until they get enough evidence to yeah. win the case. Yeah, right, right. Because right. if they don't and they lose, you you yeah. could have, they could find yeah. out later that you really did it, and yeah. they can't try you because they would give it the best shot. Wow. And, and wow. that's what it, that's how it is with Jesus. God would not send his son to suffer in your place and go through all that hell on earth to save you, and it didn't save you if it's not enough, right? Right, right. Yeah, if you're going to be tried later for the sins, for the sins yes. that he paid for. Yeah. It's right. double jeopardy for him to do that. God is a just God. And that's what we think that he is a just God in the sense that he has to deal with your <coughs> sin. He did deal with your sin. People miss that, yeah. 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 <laughs> miss, miss the obvious. It's not heavy. Yeah. Yeah. That's heavy. Yeah. Yeah. He dealt with your sin. The Bible says when he comes a second time, he's not going to come to deal with sin. Because he did. It says that. Hebrews, want to go to that one? What is that? Hebrews, do you know what that is? I think it's 11, chapter 11. We didn't even go to that one where he said, I have a father. Did it? We did go through we that did, one, huh? Yeah. Okay. Hebrews, let's see where that 11, is. 1129 or something, 1130. No, 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 it's down at the end. It's, uh, it's verse, uh, no, 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 that was uh, I'm close, I can tell. Okay, here it is. Verse 28, uh, 928. Hebrews 928. Hebrews 928. That's Hebrews it, yeah. 928. Okay, go. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. See, this is one, he's pointing, he's, he keeps talking about once. We'll go back in a second. I'll show you how he keeps mentioning once. Because those, those animal sacrifices they have to keep doing constantly over and over again. He's saying what Jesus did, it was once and it mm -hmm. was enough. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. And to those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you notice where there's, there's a scripture where Paul says that um, I fought the good fight. Uh, how does he say it? I fought the good fight. I finished, I've, the, course. finished I've, the course. I've uh, kept, kept the faith. faith. And, 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 the, and, and now there's a, a, a crown of righteousness waiting for me. There's a crown of righteousness waiting for me, and not only me, but all who of those who, who are looking forward to okay. his appearing. Yeah. That's what brought that word, that, that verse to my mind, because he says, and to those who eagerly wait for him, mm -hmm. he will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. means he's not to deal with sin, mm -hmm. but to... Introduced to, to like the Bible um, to save you. I mean, to mm -hmm. for, for salvation. But he already dealt with sin. But like I said, that one he says he, for those who look forward, to, we should be looking forward to his appearing. We should not be. Okay. Sh we should not be like yes. he says. We're not. He has not given us the spirit again to fear. We should not be fearful slaves. Right. Be fearful. We shouldn't be like that. Look at this. Go back to twenty four. This says a lot. Hebrews ten twenty four. Ten twenty four. Nine twenty four. Nine twenty four. Okay. 
For Christ has not entered the holy places made with hands, which are figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. He says we're saved to the uttermost, all those who come to God through Christ, because he always lives to intercede for us. Mm. It says that. That's what that means, he's interceded for us. Mm. He's now appearing before God for us. Okay? Nor yet as they should offer themselves often, as the high priest enters the holy place every year with the blood of another, for then he would have had to suffer from often since the foundation of the world, but now once, either that word once keeps pop popping up, mm -hmm. but now once at the end of the ages he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Yeah. What does that mean for you? Yes. To put away sin, period. He became it's sin done. for you, he it's says. Done. He says in 2 Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter 5 that he became sin for us that we yeah. might become the rights of God. He's appearing before God for you. Yeah. He put away sin. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. In chapter 10, it starts to talk how we've been perfected forever, sanctified yeah. once and for all. The perfect Paschal Oh, my Lamb. gosh. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. So it says that he appeared to put away sin for the sac by the sacrifice. How is he putting away your sin? How is he putting away our sin? Through the sacrifice of himself. Yeah. Amen. It Amen. really worked. Amen. He said, yeah. he said that it's finished. He, we're, we're supposed to be trusting in the finished work of Christ. Mm -hmm. And what is the finished work of Christ? That he put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. He Amen. put it away. Yeah. He, John chapter 10 says this. Amen. I mean, uh, 1 John chapter uh, 5. 1 John 5. Uh, 1 John 3. So there he says he put away your sin. Yeah. This says, it's, it's said in so many different ways. I don't know how you can't get this. But he says in uh, 1 John uh, 3, 5, it says, and you know, he wants you to know this, that he was manifested to take away our sins. Over there he says he, they were taken out of the way. How did it say it over there? It says that. Did it take them away? It, or Yeah, they were, the, um. To take away our sins. Take away our sins, yeah. Yeah, and here he says, you know, he was manifested to take away our sins. Amen. That's why he came. He did that. And in him, there's no sin. Are you in him? Yes. 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 Then he took your sin away. Amen. There's no sin in him. Mm -hmm. If you're in him, there's no sin. He took it away. Amen. <sighs> That's good news. Isn't that good news? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it says we know. He mm -hmm. wants you to know, okay, so first off, you need to know that Jesus was manifested to take away our sins, right? Mm -hmm. Look at this one. Go to Hebrews. Like that one says we know. That's good, yeah. That one says, this one says you need to see this. That one says we know he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there's no sin. I'm in him, there's no sin, right? Mm -hmm. Watch this. Hebrews. Uh, seven. Now, we looked at this one, but I mean, I, you got to look at these back to back. So this lands in your mind. So, you know, it's not just this. I'm not just seeing this. I'm seeing this, 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 and this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you come at me with this other stuff that I have to do this, 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 and this to get this, I'm standing on this, this, and this. It says, I've got this. I, he did it. It's yeah. done. Amen. Amen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right? See, this is why I can stand up at those lunches and when people start talking about, oh, you're out of fellowship and you're this and that, I'm like, dude, that is so not the program. And then when I ask them, where is that in the Bible? Show me, and they can't. I do one of these lunches recently. I, I told him, well, show me where that's in the Bible because he was adamant about it. We have, there's no fellowship between us and God. If we sin, we just got to confess it and then we're back in fellowship. I was, and I, I told him, <laughs> I told him. sin all the time. I, and I told him, yeah. Constantly You'd be living out of fellowship. Out, 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 out of fear. Of fear. That's yeah. somebody who yeah. thinks they're still yeah. so on t above, Unhealthy you know. Unhealthy fear. Yeah. They, they think, that they're, fear. They're, 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 think they're above that. They're yeah. always in, in fellowship. Yeah. yeah. They, they, they preach that to you, but they're not throwing, putting it on themselves. You know, they're putting heavy burden on you that they don't carry. Right, Jesus talked about that. You constantly be out of fellowship. Right? Yeah. But when he said that, when he said that, I asked him, I said, show me where that's in your Bible. Yeah. And you know what he, he said? He says, well, even if I showed you, you wouldn't believe me. I said, well, show me. Let's, let's, let's go. <laughs> let's, let's, let's see. Don't just so, assume. Yeah, yeah right, right. You know, yeah. let, let's see it, and yeah. we'll go from there. Yeah, right. yeah. You know, because he didn't have it, so he's trying to work around it. And yeah, say, well, even if I showed you, you know. He's trying to put you down. Right? Yeah. I know. Right? Yeah. 
rather than admit the truth. Yeah, I'm trying to show, I'm trying to show you the truth. Yeah. It's just what that is. It's just what denominational teachings have ingrained in their brain, and they can't even see anything different. Mm -hmm. You know, they can't. They can't. They're, they're resistant to the truth because they've been told these lies so long that even if the truth was in your face, you would reject it. That's what he meant with the new, you don't put new wine into old wineskins, because if you try and put new wine into old wineskins, you lose everything. It goes in one ear and out the other. Mm -hmm. Right? Right, right. Mm -hmm. And that's why we got to really cut, cut loose of this two-faced, uh, double, religious double talk that's talk, talking about two sides of your face. You're forgiven of all your sin, unless you sin. Right. Come unto me, all you who are ever laden, I'll give you rest. <laughs> Unless you, you sin, gotta, then you're you out gotta, of fellowship. You got to work for it. You know, yeah. then you know, yeah. right? Come to me, and we'll share the yoke, and it's you know, I'll give you rest for your soul, and all this. Stuff. But if you sin, you're out of fellowship. Yeah, it don't make any sense. Right. right. You, 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 I'm giving you my righteousness. I'm imputing my righteousness unto you for your faith. But you guys, okay, it's his right. obedience that makes you righteous. But huh? But you got to establish your own righteousness. Yeah, but then if you sin, you gotta, you gotta yeah. confess. To get re-righteous. To get re-righteous. Right. Okay. Right. It don't make no sense. Where is his righteousness? Why is, yeah. it, why is he giving right. me his if I'm going to lose it every time I sin? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where, what is and the that's point? that's where the prodigal son comes in. It's oh my gosh. Yeah. See? forgiveness yeah. or works. That, see, I'm glad you're receiving that because that mm -hmm. is important to see that because mm -hmm. you've got to realize it, it, there is, a, like he says in Hebrews chapter 11, if it's works, it's works. If it's grace, it's grace. If it's Hebrews 6, uh, Romans uh, 10, 11. Uh, Romans, 11, Romans, 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 Romans 11, 6. Romans 11, 6 says if it's grace, it's grace. If it's works, it's works. If it's grace, no longer works. If it's works, it, it, he says it, he, they don't mix. Yeah. Right, right, right. Right? right. right? right. Yeah. right. And people throw in James and says, well, James says if you say you have faith without works, you know. What I share with Dylan, which is pretty heavy, when people throw those scriptures out, but they don't understand. He actually says if you say that you have faith without works. I'll show you my faith by my works because faith without works is dead. Yeah. But what he's dealing yeah. with is somebody who says this, who is saying, I have faith, but no works. You know, uh -huh. that's, he's dealing with somebody who would say yeah. that, just yeah. like confession of sin. He says, if you, though, if you say you have no sin, uh -huh. you see what I mean? He's yeah. dealing with somebody who might say that. An argument. It's an argument with somebody right. who's coming against the truth. It's not him trying to minister mm -hmm. truth to salvation truth. Uh -huh. It's people that are coming against the truth and would say something different. That's right. what he's dealing with. Right. And people are just taking that and applying it to all Christians. You've got to confess to stay forgiven. You've got to confess to be forgiven. You know, the confession he's talking about, people who say they have no sin, he's saying, dude, you need to confess that you are, that you do sin, that you have sin. You need, then you, God is faithful to forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. You'll be yeah. saved to the uttermost. Right? right? He'll impute his righteousness. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to worry about being unrighteous. You can count on him being merciful to your unrighteousness. You can count on him giving you his righteousness, creating you righteous and truly holy. That it will be his obedience that makes you righteous. That's what you can get in Christ. But to kind of step into Christ, you've got to see your need for a Savior. And to see your need for a Savior, you've got to stop saying you don't have any sin. Yeah. And say you do. Confess that you're a sinner and need a Savior, and now you can receive one. That's what he's doing in, that, in, in, in 1 John chapter 1. He's dealing with people who say they have no sin. People who say that they don't sin. They're calling God a liar. Yeah, right. It, it, it's it's right. messed up. And people are taking that and applying it to Christians because they think everything that is written in the scriptures are for Christians. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm, they're not. Mm -hmm. They're dealing with problems in the church. Peter is dealing with, Peter in 1 Peter, he's dealing with people that are saying that uh, they're taking grace and they're turning into uh, Licentiousness. licentiousness, you know, preaching yeah. grace as licentiousness, okay, and and people, right. you know, and and he see, and, and Paul and Paul is dealing with Galatians with with, with pe people Judaizers that are coming in and perverting the gospel, okay, and, and John and First John is dealing with this form of Gnosticism that is saying that they don't even have any sin, they don't even believe Jesus came in the flesh. They're dealing with specific yes, stuff, yes. And, and people think just you taking it. The audience, yeah, is. they're just they're, yeah. they're applying it all to Christians, and you can't do that. Yeah. You got to look at context and see what is he. What, yeah. Why does what he's saying there not really fit with what's being said over here? Yeah. Where is this saved to the uttermost? All those who come to God through Christ, because He always lives to intercede for you. He's always got your back. Well, that ties in with First John, where he says in chapter two, where he's dealing with children. He says, "If we sin, we have an advocate. Mm -hmm. Jesus is interceding for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're saved to the uttermost." See, that ties in with, set, with 1 John chapter 2, where he's dealing with children, people that are saved. 
But it doesn't tie in with what he's saying in chapter 1, where he's dealing with people that say that Jesus didn't come in the flesh. They're saying, saying that Jesus, that they don't have any sin. See, that saved to the uttermost, that imputed righteousness that God has given you for your faith, does not tie in with chapter 1. That He's talking about being in darkness. That being mm-hmm. transferred from darkness into the kingdom of the sun doesn't fit in first cha- that chapter 1. Mm-hmm. The, the, the tr- he says he's inviting them into fellowship. That doesn't tie in with the fellowship that we have with the Father and the Son. We have that. So, I don't know. That, that's just... Are you feeling me? Mm-hmm. It's it just, you you got to know how to read. you got to be able to, write, like he says, to rightly divide the word. Let's look at that one. You want to look at that one real quick? The Bible says to rightly divide the word. Why would it say that? Let me see. Yeah, no, I get it. Rightly divide the word of truth. Yeah, who's he talking to? Yeah, okay, mm-hmm. so let's see. Um, what is that? That's Second Timothy 2.15? Is that it, Dylan? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's right. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed. A worker who does not need to be ashamed. Mm-hmm. Right? Right, right. Um, rightly dividing the word of truth. Why does he say there's a right, that, meaning, you know what that means? There is a right way to divide the truth and there is a wrong way. Mm-hmm. Okay. Why would he say you have to divide the truth? If it's true, it's true. Well, yeah, if it's all the scripture and you don't have to divide anything, just say accept all the scripture yeah. and, and apply it all of it, then he wouldn't say rightly divide it. Directly handle it. He's saying rightly divide the word of truth because there are things that would be applied to us under the new covenant that wouldn't apply under the old. There are plenty of things that Jesus might say to yes. them that there are things yes. that Jesus would say to them that yes. would apply to them right. that right. don't apply that would not apply at all to us under the new covenant because right. Jesus went to the cross and changed everything. Mm-hmm. So the things that Jesus would say to them, you know, hey, if you call somebody a fool, you're in danger of hellfire. Is that a message for Christians? People just think that that's new. Here's what people think that this is because it's Jesus saying it, that that's new covenant message. Right. Okay. Yeah. And they're, right. They're, they're taking Sermon on the Mount and everything that he said in Sermon on the Mount. And they're saying that that is the Christian guidelines for Christian living for Christians today. Right. Well, there is a love factor. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Always take that in. But for take that as new, what they're doing is they're taking sermon. Jesus expounding on Sermon on the Mount. Mm-hmm. He's telling me it's not just murder, it's anger. It's not just yes. it's not just adultery. It's lusting. Yes. Okay. It's not just cutting off your arm if you sin. It's actually plucking out your eyes. It's your thought life as yeah. well. Yeah. So yeah. that's what he's doing. Yeah. So he's actually making Sermon on the Mount harder. He's actually taking yeah. you to the heart of what was behind the law. Amen. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if we take that as being Christian guidelines and all that and thinking we can do all this, that we have to do this because that's the new, new commandments it's under impossible. the. You're putting yourself <laughs> yeah. even harder than the law. Yeah. You're making it worse than living under the law. That's a good point. Yeah. You see, but again, I don't take away from the love factor. There is a love factor. Should we love our enemies? Absolutely. So we should, the key ingredient is what Jesus said elsewhere, love one another as I have loved you. That's the program. When he said, I give you a new commandment, this is new covenant. Love one another as I have loved you, so love one another. He's talking about a love that I'm giving you, what I'm showering you with agape love pass it on. Mm-hmm. That's what we're doing. It is not Sermon on the Mount guides Christian guidelines. But there is a love factor you can take from there. If you turn the other cheek, give to people, lend mm-hmm. to people, you know, be reconcile with people, yeah. forgive people. All of that. Yeah. Sure, absolutely. I don't take away from any of that. It's the loving thing to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But to look at that, as, what Jesus was preaching was that as a whole. Mm-hmm. People think that if you don't forgive, you're not forgiven. Right? Because Jesus said it. Mm-hmm. If you don't forgive, you're not forgiven. You, if you do son forgive. Said, I am it, a, forgive me, Father. Bring me back in. Yeah. I'm a sinner. Where the son, the other son. The older son said, was unforgiving and he was still yeah. accepted. Yeah. He was still yeah. accepted by the Father. That's a good point. Right. But, but. That's a good point. Yeah. But Jesus, people land on that. I heard sermons taught that where they say that this one guy, this guy was once t- teaching and it was a sermon that I heard and he was teaching five things that every Christian should know. And he got to like the fourth one. He was doing pretty good. But when we got to the fourth one, he said, if you, you have to forgive because Jesus said, if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. Okay, so you have to forgive or you could lose your salvation. You know, 
which was kind of odd because the pastor before him said, well, you can't lose it. And the pastor after him, another minister that came, a visiting minister, mm -hmm. he said, you can't lose it. But he's saying, if you don't forgive, you can. Right? Mm -hmm. So he's saying that you can lose it. And he's using the scriptures that Jesus said, if you don't forgive, you're not forgiven. The problem with that is that that was before he went to the cross. He hadn't died for your sins yet. He hadn't mm -hmm. suffered right. in your place. He hadn't paid for your sins yet. Mm -hmm. right. So we don't right. have... The, the problem with that is they're landing on that one, but you know that's not all he said in Sermon on the Mount. Right. He talked about reconciling. He talked about lusting, lusting and anger, and he talked about all kinds of things. He talked about yeah. giving and lending and reconciling. He talked about a lot of other stuff in you there. Can't, if you're going to so, take it all, you you got to so, take it all. You can't just pick take that one. one out and say, yeah, if you don't forgive, you're not forgiven. But if you forgive, then you could be forgiven. So you have to forgive her, you know. Oh, what about all the other things he said? Yeah. He didn't just say that. The point is, it, 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 under the law, if you don't do any of those things, you're under a curse. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's right? Not, it's, it's, under the law, you, if you don't keep all of that, you're under a curse. And Jesus was living under the law. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's why he said they were all lost. Because yeah. they were thinking that they're pretty good. It's impossible. Yeah. Yeah. And they weren't. Yeah. Amen. Wow. Amen. <laughs> That's heavy, huh? That is heavy. Father, we just, mm, you are a good God. We come here to study your true nature and to talk about what you really, really like and, what we, and how, how you see us. Oh, that's important. And how we should see you, Father, as accepted, beloved, uh, nothing separating us from your love, one in Christ, rolled with his righteousness, one with you. Father, you, as he is, so are we in this world, your word says. That's amazing. And yes, it's a hard pill to swallow. Mm -hmm. So we thank you that you are, you are sifting out all this legalism that mm -hmm. gets in the way of understanding your truth. Mm -hmm. So, Father, continue to do this in our lives. Help us with that. We do need help. Father, amen and amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you.